Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the Odyssey written by Homer in the 8th century BC. This is part one of a two-part series. Here you will find books 1 through 12 concisely summarized. Part 2 will contain summaries of books 13 to 24. The Odyssey is the second epic poem written by Homer. It is written in 24 blocks and consists of a total of 12,109 lines. The poem takes place after the Trojan War which lasted 10 years. In the Odyssey, we follow Odysseus as he travels from Troy and eventually arrives back home in Ithaca 10 years later. In the beginning, we start off in book 1. Homer drops the reader right in the middle of the story. Rather than begin the Odyssey chronologically, we start off with Odysseus being held captive on an island by the nymph Calypso. Even though all the other Greek heroes head home, Calypso decides to keep Odysseus after Poseidon, god of the seas, pushes him towards Calypso's island on his way home. It is explained that Poseidon does this as a way of taking revenge on Odysseus for blinding his son Polyphemus, the Cyclops. The only reason Poseidon does not take Odysseus' life is because the other Olympian gods have agreed to allow him to safely return home. Back in Ithaca, 108 unworthy potential suitors are competing to take Penelope, Odysseus' wife's hand in marriage. As they are waiting for Penelope's decision, the suitors completely trash and disrespect Odysseus' home. Odysseus' son, Telemachus, also believes his father is dead and we see how he is also deeply affected by his father's absence. Telemachus is too young to ward off the disrespectful suitors and must instead stand beside his mother and offer his support. We read how Zeus allows goddess Athena to intervene by going to speak to Telemachus. Athena tells Telemachus that he ought to seek his father. She tells him that only by finding his father will he be able to free his house of the suitors. Athena ends by explaining to him that if he is unable to locate Odysseus, he will have to both empty his home of the unethical suitors plaguing his house and find his mother a good man to marry. Book 2 starts off with the reader being reminded of how wise Penelope has been for pushing back on the potential suitors and not picking any one of them. Although they pressure her to marry one of them, she is not persuaded and holds true to her values. Penelope tricks the men by telling them that she will marry one of them as soon as she finishes a piece of clothing she is preparing for Laertes, her father-in-law. As a way of delaying her decision, at night Penelope simply undoes the work she did during the day, essentially having to start working on the cloth all over again every day. In another scene, Halitharsis, an Ithacan prophet, observes two competing eagles and interprets their fighting as an omen sent by Zeus. Halitharsis tells the potential suitors that 20 years from the start of the Trojan War, Odysseus will return and take out all the suitors who squandered his wealth while he was gone. The second book ends as Athena pushes Telemachus to seek his father. We see she helps him assemble the ships and crew. Book number three starts off with Telemachus arriving at Pylos and he heads to the palace of Nestor. Nestor goes on a long rant about how he does not know what happened to Odysseus or his men after Troy was taken out by the Greeks. Nestor further adds that Agamemnon was taken out by Aegisthus as he was heading home to Mycenae, and how Orestes, Agamemnon's son, then proceeded to take out Aegisthus for ending his father's life. Nestor tells Telemachus this long-winded story as a way of warning him not to wander too far from Ithaca while his father is not home or he may, as well as his mother Penelope, find themselves in danger of the potential suitors as Agamemnon was by Aegisthus. Book number 4 starts off with Telemachus arriving in Sparta and he heads to Menelaus's palace. When he speaks to Menelaus, he also has no idea what could have possibly happened to Odysseus. Helen shares stories of Odysseus to Telemachus. In one instance, she tells him how Odysseus entered Troy dressed as a beggar. Menelaus follows up on this story by telling Telemachus about how they entered Troy by hiding inside of a wooden horse. Menelaus ends by telling Telemachus that he once spoke to the old man of the sea, also known as Nerus, and he told Menelaus that Odysseus was alive and being held captive on an island with the nymph Calypso. As the story turns back to Ithaca and Penelope, we read that the suitors are plotting to have Telemachus killed 
while he is searching for his father. However, the goddess Athena intervenes again and tells Penelope that her son will not be harmed. Book 5 starts off with Athena finally convincing Zeus to help Odysseus free himself of the grasp of Calypso the nymph. Zeus sends Hermes to tell Calypso that she must release Odysseus. As a last attempt to keep Odysseus to herself, she offers him immortality if he chooses to stay with her. But Odysseus denies her offer and decides to make his way home back to his wife and son. Odysseus ends up crafting a small boat and he sets sail towards Phaeacia. But it takes him 20 days to get there because Poseidon is still upset at him for blinding his son Polyphemus, the Cyclops, and Poseidon proceeds to set the winds against the direction of Odysseus' sail. Book 6 starts off with Athena helping Odysseus get to Phaeacia safely. Princess Nausicaa discovers Odysseus alongside with her servants washed up on the beach. Odysseus is not wearing any clothing and only a plant is covering his private parts. Because Princess Nausicaa was at the beach to wash clothing, she takes some of the clothing and gives it to Odysseus after he asks her for support. Odysseus is quickly dressed, fed, and ready to go on his way. In Book 7, Odysseus finally makes his way to Alcinous, king of the Phaeacians. On his way to Alcinous, Odysseus is stopped by Athena disguised as a young girl. She protects Odysseus from any potential hatred he may receive from the Phaeacians, and she directs Odysseus to seek the help of Queen Areta as she will help him get home. As soon as Odysseus spots the queen, he throws himself at her feet, and this causes the king and queen to like Odysseus. King Alcinous agrees to help Odysseus by providing him aid so he may finally return to Ithaca. Later on, they notice the clothing Odysseus is wearing belongs to Nausicaa, but Odysseus manages to explain his way out of the situation and they help him on his way regardless. Alcinous ends up liking Odysseus so much that he even offers his daughter's hand in marriage. Remember, I am summarizing other works of literature, so subscribe and click on the notification bell to be reminded when I upload the next summary. Also, let me know what your favorite works of literature are so I can summarize them in the future. I thank you for your support. This is a general summary of the Odyssey. If you would like a detailed summary where I go in detail into every chapter, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to turn this into a mini-series. In book number 8, the following day, Odysseus receives a proper send-off by the king and queen of Phaeacia. Odysseus easily wins multiple sporting games at the send-off celebration. King Alcinous gives Odysseus a ship to sail back to his home. Later on, Demodocus, one of the bards, tells them multiple stories. The first is of Odysseus and Achilles. He then tells everyone about how Ares seduced and had an affair with Aphrodite and how this caused Hephaestus, Aphrodite's husband, to trap Ares. Lastly, the bard shares the story of the wooden horse which causes Odysseus to become sad. As Odysseus is about to leave, the king shares a prophecy with Odysseus. He says that Poseidon would eventually end up wrecking a ship making its journey to Phaeacia. We see in this book how Odysseus only cares about returning home to his family, and not at all about his past conquests, exploits, or stories of how grand he is. In book number 9, King Alcinous tells Odysseus to share some of his stories with the court. Odysseus shares his story in the form of a flashback. Odysseus starts off with how one time he was on his way to Ismarus, the city of the Sicinies. After plundering Sicinies, however, his crew decided to stay in the city a bit longer than they should have. The Sicinies reinforcements arrived and Odysseus' crew was forced to flee. As they were fleeing, he and his men were hit by a severe storm sent by Zeus and they wound up in the land of the Lotus. Once here, the native inhabitants give Odysseus' men some of the fruit and it leads them to want nothing more from life than to remain and eat more of the fruit. The men no longer want to go home and Odysseus has no other option but to lock his crew members up aboard his ship to get them off the island. As he and his crew escape the land of the Lotus, they arrive at the land of the Cyclops. Here, they find a group of uncivilized, one-eyed giants. When the crew stumbles upon a cave full of cheese, milk, and sheeps, they are greeted by Polyphemus, the son of Poseidon. At first, 
Polyphemus is hospitable to Odysseus and his crew, but he soon turns on them and eats two of Odysseus' men. He then traps Odysseus and his crew in the cave with the rest of his food. Although Odysseus wants to take out Polyphemus that very moment, he chooses not to and instead designs a plan to escape from the cave since only Polyphemus is strong enough to move the stone he placed to shut them inside of the cave. Odysseus goes into executing his plan and gives the Cyclops the wine he is carrying. When the Cyclops asks Odysseus what his name is, he responds by saying his name is no one. Polyphemus is not smart and so he believes him. As soon as the Cyclops falls asleep due to the alcohol in the wine, Odysseus and his men forge a giant staff and push it into Polyphemus' eye and they end up blinding him. When Polyphemus yells out for the support of his neighboring Cyclopses, he yells that no one is hurting him. So they also believe him and walk away from the cave, assuming no one is hurting him. The next day, Odysseus' men tie themselves to the Cyclops' sheep, and when he releases his sheep to graze, the men finally escape and head to the ship. Odysseus, full of pride, ends up yelling his real name to Polyphemus. This later proves to be a huge mistake for Odysseus because Polyphemus goes on to pray that his father Poseidon take revenge on Odysseus for blinding him. In Book 10, Odysseus and his crew have escaped from the Cyclops and arrived at the home of the Master of Winds, Aelus. They are welcomed and they stay here for one month. Aelus gives Odysseus a pouch containing all of the winds that may deter his ship and throw him off course. Aelus leaves only the western wind free so that it can push Odysseus toward Ithaca. The crew set sail and after a few days they come so close to Ithaca but they grow curious as to what Aelus gave Odysseus in his pouch. When Odysseus falls asleep they open the pouch and the winds come flying out sending the ship backwards from where they came. When the crew arrives back at Aelus he refuses to help them any further. This causes the Greeks to have to row their boat until finally arriving at the land of the Lastragonians who are a group of giant cannibals. They attack Odysseus' crew with rocks and spears and end up destroying 11 of his 12 ships. The Lastragonians also eat many of Odysseus' crew members. Odysseus escapes on his vessel with a few of his men left alive. He arrives at Aea where Xerxes, the goddess, lives. Xerxes welcomes a small group of Odysseus' men by giving them a drink that causes them to lose all their memories and transforms them into pigs. Odysseus then starts thinking of different ways of trying to free his men. Along the way, he meets with Hermes disguised as a man. Hermes gives Odysseus a potion that makes him immune to Xerxes' drinks. The men are freed once Odysseus shares a bed with Xerxes and threatens her. After spending a year on Xerxes' land, Aea, Xerxes tells Odysseus that he must go to Hades to speak to Tiresias, the prophet of the dead. She shares that Tiresias will give him directions on how to arrive back to Ithaca. In book number 11, Odysseus heads to Hades by following the instructions given to him by Xerxes. Once in Hades, Tiresias tells him that he will get to Ithaca and eventually die of old age, but only if he refrains from killing any of the cattle on the island of Trinitia, belonging to the sun god Helios. While in Hades, Odysseus is able to see his mother and old friends of his past. Hades reminds us of Odysseus' morality and just how short life can be. In Book 12, Xerxes warns Odysseus of the challenge he is going to face next. She warns him of the sirens his crew will sail by. The sirens sing seductive songs to manipulate sailors into being trapped by them. Xerxes recommends Odysseus tie himself to his boat and fill his crew members' ears with wax as a way of making their way through the sirens. After this, Odysseus learns earlier from Xerxes that he will have to sail past Scylla, the six-headed monster, and sacrifice six of his crew members to her. This is done as a way of avoiding Charybdis, the sea monster right next to Scylla. Xerxes provides Odysseus with his second warning against bothering the cattle of Helios. When the crew set sail, 
they land on the island Trinitia. While here, the crew grows desperately hungry, and while Odysseus is asleep, they end up slaughtering some of the cattle of Helios. As soon as their ship sets sail again, as an act of vengeance, their ship is quickly wrecked by a vicious storm sent by Zeus. The entire crew dies except for Odysseus who ends up being pushed back to the sea monster Charybdis and is swallowed whole. Odysseus is saved when he holds on to a piece of his raft which Charybdis later spits out. After he manages to escape from Charybdis, Odysseus ends up on Ogygia, the island of Calypso. Here he remains captive for seven years. As he ends his story, Odysseus ends his flashback and the story he was telling the Phaeacians of his adventures. That was part one of The Odyssey by Homer. To watch part two, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this summary, consider clicking like. It goes a long way toward helping me grow this channel. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. I can make you immortal. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.